you have two homes, both at a million dollars, both on the same block, one of them's completely remodeled and one of them is from 1960 and it has not been well taken care of. You can't do dollar per square foot because if they're both going to be 2000 square feet at the same price, but completely different inside, people are not going to pay the same price, right? So get dollar per square foot out of your mind. And this is how like Zillow does their Zestimates or Realtor.com, Redfin. If you ever scroll down and look at the comparable properties, you'll notice that A, some are like, it's like a two-story condo next to like a one-story ranch style home. And I'm like, what? This is not even a comparable property. So that is why you can't trust those or algorithms or computer based. I went through appraising training back during COVID with CoreLogic. So when a realtor or when a consumer says, oh, but dollar per square foot in this neighborhood is this, an appraiser is just like, no. <laughs> guys, are you ready for some knowledge? I'm going to give you some amazing value in this video because if you're thinking of buying or selling a home in the Phoenix or Scottsdale area, it's very important to make sure if you're listing it, that you're not overpricing it. And if you're buying a home that you're not overpaying for the home, stay tuned till the end. I'll have so many great tips for you. So uh, let's go. One of the first things you want to look for if you're buying or selling a home and you want to make sure you're not overpaying or that you're listing it at the right price is the location, location, location. You do wanna make sure that you are comparing homes in that same area. And I will say too, there are certain areas around the valley, uh, around the valley people pay more for a zip code uh, than the zip code right next door. You can literally be divided by one street. Actually, where I live, this is very, very common. So I am a stone's throw away from Gilbert, from Chandler, from Tempe, from Mesa. Okay, I'm in one of those four cities, but I'm on like this border area, but people will pay more for where I live versus where other people live based purely on the zip code or the name of the city. When you are looking at location, typically you wanna stay under a mile and you don't want to cross major freeways. If you can stay within the same subdivision, that is really your best bet. But if you have to go further out, you know, that's okay too. And then you also want it to be a like kind property. Okay. So a one story home and a two story home, uh uh, okay. Those are not comparable. Okay? And a townhome is not going to be compared to a single family detached home, right? So those are things that you need to make sure, okay, that you're doing a like kind property. If you back to a main road, you're going to lose value. People will say, oh, I'm coming from New York or Chicago. Like this isn't nose or this isn't road noise. It's totally fine, which is great. But because of the lack of privacy, you are going to lose some value there. Okay. And then you want to look at the size of the property, the shape of the property. Does it have functional utility, right? Meaning does it flow nicely? Or was there like an add-on on the other side of the house and you have to go through three different doors to get there and you know you end up in la la land right maybe that's not a functional part of the home so it may not actually add value even if you have square footage so you got to make sure that it flows right now we're also going to look at special features you know uh solar which actually does not give you much value unless it's paid off completely so just a heads up there but is there a pool? Is it a newer pool? Does it have the pop-up cleaning or is it an old, you know, jelly bean pool that needs to be resurfaced? So, but pools will bring different values in different areas and bathrooms, right? Like two and a half baths to two baths. That's fine. You'll get a little bit of value for having that half bath. It is nice. It does add to privacy as long as again, it's in the right spot and not just like a urinal that was put into the garage like my husband did. <laughs> So now we have found these like kind properties. So now we want to adjust. Okay. So maybe they both have updated kitchens. Great. But one was done in the last two years. One was done eight to 10 years ago. Okay. So one has the older, maybe brown colored bull nose top, you know, uh, as far as the granite and one is the white square waterfall type island. And so that is going to bring probably more value than that older granite, right? But they're both nice. They're not laminate. It's not 1990s. So you can do a comparison there, but you're going to get more value for the more recent upgrades versus the older upgrades. Okay. Remember though, that cost and value are different just because you paid 50 grand to get your kitchen redone 
doesn't mean you're going to get a $50,000 value. Now there's a chance you'll actually get a $70,000 value, right? Because maybe it was put together really well and people are willing to pay right now for upgrades because people don't like remodeling, right? So unless you're my husband, he's a contractor, he loves remodeling, which by the way, if you are looking to buy a home out here, I have helped many people buy homes that maybe weren't their perfect fit. And then my husband and I can recommend flooring people, painters, landscapers, HVAC, roofers, whatever, you name it, to come in and help you get the home to where you want it to be. I can definitely um, recommend all of our contacts for you, which I know a lot of my clients have taken advantage of, but that is a whole different uh, a whole different sphere we can chat about if um, you reach out to me. So anyhow, where was I? And now you're going to look at square footage. You want to try to stay within about 150 square feet, maybe 200 square feet up or down. And that is more important than the lot size, by the way. But if you have a home with an 8,000 square foot lot, which I would say older homes out here, pretty much across the valley, uh, across the whole valley, the average lot size is probably like seven to 8,000 square feet, I'd say. Newer builds out here though, you guys, the average lot size is probably like five to 6,000 square feet. So keep that in mind when you are home shopping. Older homes do have the, the benefit of a larger lot, but you know, then you have those corner homes, those cul-de-sac homes, right? That's gonna have a 10,000, 12,000 square foot lot. Are people going to pay more for that? Yes, they are, okay? That's just how it is across the board. If you're looking for a home in a neighborhood and this amazing corner lot comes up, I have never had someone say, no, I don't want extra space. Now you have to decide how much more is that larger lot worth? So we're going to do a comparison and see how much more were buyers willing to pay for these larger lot homes, right? That's where you come up with a value. Let's next talk about dates, okay? The more recent the sale, the better it's going to be. All right, you guys, before we jump into more details, I just want to say thank you so much for watching this video. I'm Andrea Sheppy, a Phoenix native and a full-time realtor out here in Phoenix, Arizona. Please reach out to me if you're thinking of buying or selling a home. I'm in this all day, every day, and I absolutely love what I do. Let's jump back into how you get a value on a home. Let's uh, reiterate a bit, okay? Same neighborhood, same style of home same number of stories, very close in square footage. You can be further off on lot square footage, but you have to look for that value. Doesn't have to be exact bedrooms or exact bathroom, but you wanna be as close as you can. And look at the interior, look at the upgrades, look at the functional utility of the home and make sure that it meshes well. And then that is gonna be a home that you could compare it with. Now, if you're getting a loan, then your lender is going to require an appraisal. The reason being is if you default on your loan and the bank now absorbs the property and they have to get rid of the property, right? Because, you know, banks and lenders, they don't want to own properties. That's not their business model, right? They're into lending money. So you default, they acquire the property. They need to make sure that you didn't overpay for it because now they have to resell it, right? They have to get rid of it. So that is why the lender will make you get an appraisal. If you are a seller, Sellers get appraisals done to make sure they're not overpricing the home, right? Maybe you have a really unique property and you just can't quite get the value down. You're not sure. There's nothing around it like it. That is a great time as a seller to get an appraisal before you list right, it. You guys, thank you so much for joining me to talk about how to make sure you're not overpaying for a home. Again, I'm Andrea Sheppy, a full-time realtor out here in Phoenix, Arizona. I would love to be your real estate guide. So definitely reach out to me anytime and uh, make sure you watch some of these next videos and I'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you. Leave our eyes, blue skies, blue skies, white powder.